Maybe next time, buddy. It's just not your time. We'll eventually get to use you. What's up, guys? T. Croc here. Welcome to the vlog. As you can see, we are at the shop. Um, the Myvex swap did not happen, and I will tell you why. There's a few reasons why. First of all, the shop that had the parts to do the fuel red mod basically took about two months, and they're still not done. I checked on them once a week to say, hey, how's the progress going? Do you need anything? And they kept telling me, oh, it'll be done next week. It'll be done next week. It'll be done in a few days. Uh, so last week I went up there and I asked them if it was done. They told me no. So I took my parts back. Uh, while searching for another shop to actually do the mod that I wanted, um, the racing league that I'm in uh, busted out a new rule saying, hey, if you swap any kind of motor that's not OEM, you will be bumped into Unlimited. So basically I would have been put in with an LS1 swap, 2J swaps, you name it, uh, 240s, Miatas, all of those would be in there. So I knew I wasn't going to be able to compete with that, so I said, oh, well, might as well go back to a 3.0. So I found a GTS motor, and I will explain everything that, um, that I did with it. Um, also, I said, well, if I'm going to be going down this route, I might as well put my original turbo kit back on the car once I feel comfortable with it. So let me go over the motor and what I've done with it. Got this motor from a cycle yard. Um, overall, the condition of it wasn't bad. Uh, it was a little dirty, so I had to clean it up a little bit, um, but I got it for a really good price. So with any motor, I decided to tear it down, inspect it a little bit more. Uh, the junkyard did like send me a video of it running in the car, but I like to tear it down myself, and I knew that I was going to replace the typical maintenance parts because it's a lot easier to replace uh, maintenance parts when the motor's out of the car and it's eventually gonna fail and you don't really know how long these parts have been used. So I did the typical maintenance. Uh, I broke it down and I replaced all the gaskets. Um, decided to remove the intake manifold and uh, inspect the spark plug, so I changed those out as well. Uh, tore down the timing side uh, to take a look at the belt to make sure it wasn't loose. If it was loose, then it probably did like slip timing and that's probably uh, damaging valves. Uh, like I said, but in the video, the car did sound really good. It sounded like it was running on all cylinders, but I don't trust the timing belts. Uh, like I said, they can break at any moment. And since this motor, like if the timing belt snaps while the car is running, you might as well replace the heads because you bent a couple of valves. So I, once the timing side was down, I re replaced the water pump, uh, all the pulleys and the timing belt. I think I ordered everything off of a uh, Rock Auto, uh, and I reset the timing as well. Uh, it was kind of tedious uh, because I was doing this on a crate versus doing this on a uh, like a stand for a motor. Um, but I ended up getting it done. Um, if you guys didn't know, there's like three marks that you have to line up on the valve covers, and there's one on the crank itself. It's a little dash. So you got to get those all lined up and then replace the tensioner uh, as well. And once the timing's set, you can pull the tensioner out and you should be good to go. I like to double check, so I'll put the crank pulley back on and give it a couple of uh, cranks around to make sure the timing still lines up. Because sometimes when you uh, put the belt on, some of the gears might slip. So you think that you had the timing set perfect and then once you release the tensioner, the tensioner will snap. Usually it's the rear bank. The rear bank timing will go off one tooth and your car will run perfectly fine, but you will get this occasional misfire. And I'm speaking from experience. You get this occasional misfire. It doesn't happen um, all the time, but you'll just be driving and then the car will start misfiring. Um, if you just replace the belt or anything like that, check your timing because mine was off one tooth and that basically threw everything off. Um, so I want to explain a couple other things of why I picked the GTS motor. Um, it is the, basically it's the motor that makes the most horsepower as a 3.0. Um, that's because of the camshaft. The camshafts are the biggest uh, reason why I got this. They make the most peak horsepower 
and they basically, since I have to follow these rules, uh, GTS motor falls into the OEM category, so I can use that. Now, I'm not able to use the butterfly valves, so I basically am not going to use the GTS manifold. Instead, I will use the manifold off of the 3.8, the 6G75 non-MyVec, not the MyVec. And I'll also use my S90 uh, Evo 8 uh, throttle body. Um, ideally, you shouldn't boost the GTS motor because the compression is a lot higher. So it it's more prone to blowing, blowing up. Uh, and I use that term loosely because if you tune the car right and it's all running in perfect time and you're not running some insane amount of boost, you can run a boosted GTS. There's plenty of guys that are out there that do it. Um, you just have to be more careful. Uh, you, there's no room for error on that side. The GT, like you can run almost stock timing and you can be okay for a couple pulls. You do that with a GTS, you might as well window, you're gonna window the block. Um, so I'll use my old turbo kit and I'm probably gonna do a different setup. I will probably use uh, E85. Uh, that's gonna make a lot of more power. Um, if the motor comes out, then I probably will rebuild it with forged pistons. If you guys didn't know, you guys have forged rods in the 3.0, so they're good up to about 500 horsepower. Uh, I don't think I will probably run more more than that. I think 500 horsepower is probably the max. Um, I don't even think I need that much. I really just need about maybe 300 to 350, and I'll be good. Now, I say that now, and then I always want more, and I want more, and I want more, and I want more. Um, so, with that being said... Uh, I buttoned up the time inside, uh, everything looked good, water pump and all that. Hopefully it does not leak because sometimes the gasket on the water pump doesn't seat correctly and I try, I double and triple checked it to make sure it was seating. But even though that happens, it sometimes still won't seat right and it'll leak a little bit. Um, so I don't like the original 3.0 valve covers, so I got rid of them. Um, I personally like the 3.8 uh, non-MyVec ones because the PCV valve is actually the one from the Evo 8 and it's uh, it's not the plastic one that are prone to cracking and so I use I use the 3.8 ones instead. All valve covers swap over. Uh, there's like little modifications you got to do with them. Uh, MyVec, I don't know why someone would want to swap a MyVec, but they do fit, but they do not sit well. Uh, they do rub against the lower intake manifold. Only reason why I know that is because I know a couple guys tried and they wonder why their exhaust was leaking. I mean, not exhaust, their intake was leaking. Um, so, with that being said, did the valve covers. They're usually a pain in the ass because they don't sit into the valve cover and when you flip it over, they like to come out. But luckily, this one went on pretty smooth. Um, internally wise, for the heads, they looked really good. Um, there was the whoever maintained this motor maintained it pretty well, but on the exterior there was like a lot of gunk and like sludge, like just from not being able, not cleaning it. But the inside looked really good, like there was no sludge or anything like that. So I have a lot of confidence in this motor that it's gonna run pretty well. With that being said, I did when I um, when I pulled this off. I did um, replace the intake uh, gaskets. I'm pulling everything off. Might as well replace them with new gaskets. I personally use um, Mali and Victor resins. I feel like those fit the best. Um, and Victor resins, they have this little uh, sealant that actually comes on the gasket. And I believe that actually helps it seal a lot better. Um, everybody usually use Felpro. I don't like Felpro. Felpro, in my opinion, the fitment can be eh. Sometimes they fit well, sometimes they fit horribly. So I just stay away from Felpro. So I think Victor Resins and Mali are probably the closest to OEM that you can get. OEM is hands down probably the best you can get, but it's really hard to get that for shipping. Uh, one issue that since when I pulled the motor, the distributor got messed up. So instead of ordering one, I knew they were going to send me a distributor. So I thought that I could be able to take the old distributor off. And uh, if you see the reluctor wheel, how it has like that one edge. Now, that's from a 2000 to 01. The 2003 and up and some of the 02s have four pulses. So 
I tried to switch those out. Unfortunately, it was rusted, so it, it didn't work. Uh, so I ordered a new one. So that one should be here soon. Um, for fuel rails, I used my VR4 fuel rails. Unfortunately, I forgot that the fuel rail loop was made for the 3.8 swap, so it's a little bit wider. Um, I am using OEM injectors, and um, I had to basically, I have to order a new, another loop. It's a little bit shorter, and it will fit with those adapter settings. So other than that, I just bolted it up and got that going. Um, I ended up stripping off my Fendeza uh, light and flywheel, and I'm going to use that with the new setup. I've used it in the past. It works uh, very well. Um, it does rev up significantly faster, but on the flip side, the revs drop down very fast as well. So if you're going to try to um, keep the revs up, it you have to be fast on your feet. Um, for the clutch, I am using a spec uh, plus three. Now it. I didn't want to uh, go with a smaller clutch or one that can handle less horsepower. Now this clutch is still a disc style, so it doesn't have that Harson engagement. So I can use this one and not um, like jerk the car and like like the puck style is a very harsh on engagement. And I didn't want to swap and buy new clutches if in the, in the long run I'm gonna be turbo in this car. So this clutch should last me a while. Um, granted, if I drive the piss out of the car, it might not, and I might have to um, go with something different. Um, but I've been a big fan of spec clutches. So I uh, use a spec cl clutch because it barely has any miles on it, and to save some money, I just use that instead. Um, uh, Mating the transmission. Now, there's different ways you can do this. It's a pain in the ass to do when the motor's in the car if you don't have a transmission jack. So what I usually do is I will have the motor on uh, the cherry picker and I just kind of just slide it and slide it and keep sliding and keep sliding it until it matches up. And then I'll start putting some of the bolts in and I don't thread them all the way because you have to kind of, you can over torque it. So until it's all lined up, I'll bolt it in um also for my transmission i have a quaif lsd uh like i said i've made a video of this in the past that is hands down the best mod you can do for the 3g um and if you think about upgrading your clutch without with a stock diff you are going to blow that diff in the long run i will tell you this um i did not um i had a stock lsd and i think i autocross for one year and when we pulled that uh diff out I was missing teeth, a lot of teeth. So, got the trans back, uh, made it, it went very smooth. Uh, it's basically ready to go. Um, like I said, there's a few odds and ends that I have to get done, but the car is, the motor is ready to drop in. So that's it, uh, the motor is basically ready to go. Um, there's a few parts that I need to install, but I'm waiting on. Um, so I am going to install this motor probably tomorrow. Um, it will not run this week unless the fuel barrel loop comes in and the distributor comes in. And there's still a couple other odd ends I need to tie up. Um, but ideally, I'm probably going to start it up next week. So not next week, the following week. So I will see you guys then.